had uh, another team member step into the um, control van just now. Uh, Elsa, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Kara. My name is Elsa, and I'm a supporting scientist here on the Nautilus. Um, while not on the Nautilus, I'm a researcher at the Palau International Coral Reef Center, and um, really happy to be here with everyone. Thanks so much, Elsa. And a um, quick update of um, what we've been up to on the Nautilus. We're currently exploring an unnamed seamount. Um, uh, it's about 85 nautical miles northwest of Curie Atoll. And um, we're planning to collect some rock samples here to determine whether um, this particular seamount was formed over the Hawaiian hotspot or um, whether it formed during the Cretaceous period or was it Cretaceous in origin? And um, uh, we'll also collect some biological observations and samples um, depending on uh, what is on our priority list, um, what kind of things we see um, as we explore. So uh, hopefully the ocean will reveal some uh, uh, really amazing observations today. And just to note with our samples, we are very um, careful whenever uh, we collect samples. We do it with all um, necessary permits, um, specific goals that are made ahead of time before the dive. Um, so we're not just grabbing whatever we see, but um, for very specific um, scientific studies and uh, only if we see a certain number of these particular creatures ahead of time. So we're not sampling anything that's too rare um, we're really focused on understanding expanded ranges of certain species or new associations between different species that we haven't um, observed before or um, potentially new species as well. Uh, so definitely um, we're in a really sacred place here in Papahanaumo Kuakea Marine National Monument. And Delta's we want the to difference between uh, Atlanta and Hercules. Um, be very mindful of um, approaching um, all this uh, sampling with a lot of respect. No, altitude is just altitude, how far the vehicles are off the seabed. Respect and reverence. If you have any questions, feel free to head to nautiluslive.org and um, let us know in the comment box under the uh, video feed. We are uh, seeing the Volteria glass sponge. There's a Vatipatis, and it looks like a different kind of a black coral by the Vatipatis. If we can have a quick zoom, there's uh, what, from a distance a what looks like a primnoid colony in the back, and uh, another one of the Goniasterid sea stars feeding on a bamboo coral stalk. Hold that, please. That looks more like a Leobatis, but I have to check. Looks like a Bathy Pathies to me, but. No, no, the one, the oh, orange one next to the it. The orange one is a, a yeah. Lilopathies? No. Wait, what did you say? Um. <laughs> Leopathies. Leopathies. Leo Leo thank you. <laughs> Maybe, but I'm not sure. Yeah, if is uh, can we get a bit more zoom or? Yeah, working on it. Okay, thank you. Okay, falls yeah. in there on the polyps. There are several or there. branched. Uh, is it the one on the left or the right? You want? Sorry. Yeah, this is the one that the uh, yeah okay, the left okay. one. 
Yeah, that, that is a Leo Pathis. Uh, question, I think, for, uh, I don't know, and Taylor Ann, if you remember a few day days ago, we sampled a, a much bigger, but that had much smaller polyps. Yeah. Um, and, and I'm pretty certain we haven't seen this. Can you guys confirm that? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, not, I have not seen it. I haven't um, either. On any previous watch. Um, I'm not sure if any other watches have, but it's something that we ha have not collected if we want to, were yeah. interested um, in the chat. Uh, or The Leopathies that was collected, you're right, was a much bigger colony. Mm -hmm. And uh, Yeah, so there's, a, there's been two species that I described here from Hawaii. One is much shallower, like three to 500 meters, and one that's quite a bit deeper with smaller polyps. And, and since we are much deeper here, uh, I believe this is uh, yeah something new for Hawaii. So if we are in a position to sample, it'd be good to get just a just a small clipping if we are set up for that. Yeah, we should be able to do that. Sounds great. Awesome. Uh, you want to snip and slurp or clip and box? It's clipping. A small part. Yeah, so we won't take this whole organism. We'll just take about a 10 centimeter snip um, so we can leave it be. Right, um, that's yeah. in line with our protocols. Yes. Kind of looks like a 10 centimeter snip, Roger. Check this. And you know, now is, now is the time for us to remember that we are in a special place. And, um, you okay, know, this go is. Culturally significant place, a uh, sacred place for native Hawaiians, and therefore the species here and even the rocks are sacred objects, considered very special. So we only collect just as much as we need and in very careful okay, Jane, process. You can zoom in there for us. And with gratitude. Yeah, thanks, Hans, for highlighting that. And actually, black corals were, or, and continue to this day, be culturally significant here in Hawaii. There's a Ekaha Kumoana, there's a name for them. Uh, they have used them for centuries for medicinal purposes, not this species, but a few that we have in shallow waters. Thanks so much for sharing that, Daniel. Um, sorry I didn't see you over there. Would you like to introduce yourself as well? <laughs> Oh, yeah. Sure. Thanks, Tori. Uh, uh, Daniel Wagner is sitting here in the studio just lurking over everybody's uh, shoulder, uh, <laughs> co-leading this expedition with <laughs> Megan, and uh, glad to be here. The black coral that we are currently collecting uh, also looks very similar to Staropathies, and I think Tina over, yeah, Tina over the chat also is suggesting Storopathies is the probable ID, but again, black corals are very difficult to ID because of their overlapping uh, morphology, so it is definitely a good collection and will uh, inform us more about the black coral diversity uh, in this particular area and on the seamount because uh, we have mostly been seeing the bathypathies and some of the antipathies uh, genera so far. Can we get a, a, a good zoom on that? Thank yeah. You. Given the branching pattern, it kind of looks like. Um, I guess we're putting it in the starboard box there. Yeah, um, you can put it in the starboard box B, um, C, or D. Those are all open. And we had a viewer just comment about this orange coral we're looking at. So this is the black coral. It is a black coral. Right. And um, they were asking what the what was called again, if you don't mind repeating that. Uh, so we don't have a confirmed ID on it. So all black corals are antipatherians. Okay. Uh, and no, there like are two probable IDs point. right now. One is prob uh, can be a leopathy species. And the other is the storopathies. So, and which one of the boxes is open? T B, Roger. And uh, which box black. should you put it in? Oh. What's that? So, starboard box C is open. 
over at box C. C, B, or D is fine. Okay, close it. All right, and just to confirm that that go in box D? Yeah. All right, and that was sample number 064. Watch out for that rock. 064? That's correct. Thank you, Jalian. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys for uh, navigating and uh, maneuvering to collect that so carefully. Yeah, that was a wonderful collection. Yes, please. Yep. yep. We are seeing those. You know, since we we haven't seen these, we would not take the whole yeah. animal. And we don't need the but whole animal. It, it's organism. fortunate that a, just a clipping, small clipping, can uh, suffice for the information needed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, for most of the coral fans, if it's a fan like structure sure, then uh, a clipping is always good enough if it's a very small yeah, colony like an anthomasis then it's difficult to clip them mm -hmm. and sometimes the only way is to collect the whole coral but otherwise if they're above a certain size a clipping i have is to at least sketch up to atlanta a good enough sample yeah we have a beautiful glass sponge uh, probably looks like a new plectelid with a crinoid on its crown And um, once you collect the samples, you're looking at morphology, right, at the branching patterns, and then potentially DNA um, yes. extraction, which doesn't require much tissue anyway, right? Very small amount, so. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I don't know, I can... I'll say it again. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, science, do you mind when we're collecting samples, um, just to kind of cut the chatter so we can uh, concentrate and then also hear the important science-y part uh, for where things need to go and, you know, how much to snip and all of that? Yeah, for sure. Sorry about that. If no, no. Um, that was difficult just now. And if we forget, please feel free to just... Um, let us know. We're also we'll watching try to keep uh, that in mind. Atlanta and the boat, and uh, you know the, what's happening besides yeah. focusing on the screen. So yeah, this makes it really challenging. It's like a double tango. <laughs> there is a uh, sea star. Sorry, event happening there. I'm gonna try and sense the boat is stopped. Try and get the gross me out view. Mahalo, Kanaloa, for letting us take um, the sample for us to um, learn more about the ocean and what you have to offer. So, Mahalo or Naokua. Thank you, Jake. Bamboo skeleton, the bamboo coral skeleton that we are seeing, uh, which has a sea star, a goniastrid feeding on it at the bottom, at the base of it, is probably what uh, one of those keratoisid uh, bamboo corals, which are uh, sparsely branched. And one of my colleagues, my lab mates, she, her project is to look at these sparsely branched bamboo corals and what she's finding is that probably they are a new species. So, uh, uh, which are 
limited to the Pacific Ocean in terms of distribution so far, so it is always great to observe more of the, those thriving. And we were seeing a few of them last night as well. I think there's a Paristonella like primnoid in the background, some uh, more primnoid colonies here. So um, I, I think that the coral that we were seeing was a new species of black coral that has been found in Papahana and Kuakea, known as Leopathies, typically seen at shallower depths than where oh, we are currently. Shallower. Do you know the species? What is the species of it? Um, let's see. Somehow the branching pattern didn't really look very Leopathies, Leopathies, uh, but they can be. Can uh, be Leopathies enosa. Okay. Can be quite... Uh, difficult to ID black corals. Which is why we got a sample. Yeah. yeah right? Because um, uh, that'll help us with the genetic mm -hmm. um, what is it? Library? No. <laughs> Can't I think of the word. Uh, yeah. Um, the genetic makeup of this coral. Yes. To see if it's a different species mm -hmm. then. Um, yeah. So what is it most, clo most closely related okay. to and what species it is? Yeah. So if it, is. if it was the Leopathies, we have not seen it at these good. depths before. That's so. great. And we have a barnacle along with some cup corals and a very nice sea star, probably again the Hippaster, definitely a Goniasterid feeding on what is left of the bamboo coral stock. We see several cup corals and one uh, quite a big barnacle. We have been seeing barnacle, barnacles, but I don't recall seeing this big of a barnacle uh, on any one of our watches, so that's interesting. Yeah, wow. And those um, black um, like extensions coming from that, those are the feeding appendages, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Those are called the CD, most probably. Let me check. Yeah, another interesting thing about barnacles is they're actually, I believe, in the um, same group as crustaceans, right? Even though they don't look like crabs or lobsters that okay, much. Go away, ticks. Yeah, there's a tiny squat lobster peeking out from one of the holes. I was just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the uh, barnacles are are Thicostraca. So they're not crustaceans, but they are arthropods, definitely. Oh, um, right, arthropods. Yeah. yeah, so then the class Thicostraca, and then we have the subclass, so you pay them. It's a beautiful Voltaire sponge with a crinoid. What's that, mate? Yeah, all right. Yeah, I'll come under you here in a minute. And yeah, you will have to come up. There's... Is that a pinkish stalk at the base by the uh, user marker <laughs> yeah no, I was just trying to be sure that if it's actually something or just a crack in the rock that uh, and we have the hormetheid hanging on from the stalk
You have some uh, bamboo webs on the right as well. There's a crinoid tucked in. Not hanging on by much, is it? Is that one organism or something hanging on to another? I think uh, the the flight of an enemy is hanging on to the pink stalk. If we can get a closer look at the stalk. They just happen to color coordinate. Yeah. That's why it was a little, it took me a while to. We have a beautiful parastinellum primnoid, a uh, hemichorallium. Mm Are we seeing some Chrysogorgia out there? Uh, stand by, I don't do anything right now. What is that? The fine polyp. Where? Can you point out? In the center of the screen, right next to the lasers. The lasers. I can't see the lasers. Oh, the small. Oh, the okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we have a closer look at this one? Yep. Thank I you. you might want to see it. Like I can see some bamboo whips in the background. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, good eye. Yeah, that is definitely a chrysogorgia. You were right, that's a chrysogorgia, I think. If you can have a quick zoom on, yeah. So in the particular frame in view, we can see a uh, bathy bathies that looks, seems like it has been broken in half. There's a small recruit of probably a hemichorallium, the pink on the rock. There's a sea urchin, uh, some hydroids, probably a barnacle growing there. And uh, can we have a quick zoom on this coral on the left? Uh, to look at the skeleton and the polyps. There is a crinoid, beautifully perched on top of it, and it has several ophiroids on it. And the chrysogorgia was, the chrysogorgia, I think it's a chrysogorgia, and uh, I think that would have, we did see a metallogorgia last night, but I think that was the only chrysogorgia that we observe, at least on during our watch. I don't know. It's probably too close to a rock. Uh, is that the full zoom? That is the full zoom. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
We're good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can continue. That look. And just jumping in here to answer some chat questions. Um, we had a viewer asking if the flytrap anemone is predatory towards corals. Um, Upashana, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're c collecting things in the water, not eating yeah. the corals like these. But there are some other predators like sea stars um, that might be predating on these corals that we're looking at. Um, and another question about our Niskin bottle samples. Um, again, correct me if I'm um, misspeaking, but uh, yes, we will be collecting eDNA or envir environmental DNA from the water collected in those Niskin bottle samples. Yeah, um, it actually might be a good idea good, to yeah. take one in this area since we've been getting, we are beginning to see an increase in diversity, diversity and density yeah. of these different corals and sponges. So um, if we're in a position to fire Niskin, we could do that. Um, yeah, we are. Well, we can get there. Do you want to be on the uh, sitting on the deck, do you, or up above, or? Uh, if we could go back to that area of the the diverse corals that we were seeing on that boulder rock face, that would be great. Yeah, okay. As soon as we get a digital stills picture of that sponge in it. Yeah, it's pretty. Looks like no one's home there either. Uh, you can zoom in there if you want. Oh, there's... Is that a teeny tiny oh. sea, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sea star? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's there just for you, Mia. <laughs> it's so tiny. So it tiny. Is. Wow. It's like just the size of one of those green dots. Yeah. And for our viewers, those two green laser dots are 10 centimeters apart. So that gives you an idea of how tiny the sea star is. It's just a baby. This could potentially be a polypapagon. Yeah, yeah, I, I think um, Kukuya or uh, Virginia mentioned that. That they saw polypapagon sponges? Yeah. Okay. Okay, there you go. Have you seen it? Yes, thank you. My pleasure. Is the, were you just looking up the sponge? Is it supposed to look kind of like What's open on the side like this, as yeah. opposed to other sponges that are just, they no, have more of that? Yeah. So for the, the some of the polypapagon sure sponges, got, they seem to have that kind of cave-like texture where they, they open mm. up on one side. Cool. Um, yeah. I think we both turned the wrong way, so we gotta manage that. So if I turn one way and you turn to look at me the wrong way, we wind up with a turn. I think there's a name for it. I think they're commonly called the elephant's ear sponges. Mm. Uh, I can see that. Yeah. yeah. Especially like some of the these ones. If I'm not and wrong. Oh, sorry. Um, for a Niskin Dan, the next to fire would be Niskin number four. Niskin number four, right. I'll go uh, land in between the two rocks here, if you're all right with that. Yeah. Corals behind us, corals the left, corals the right. What's that? Uh, can you open up the iris for me so I can see those lotto balls? <laughs> four you say we 
We used to have a tradition here with video when video would say three, two, one, Niskin. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Steve had a very uh, NASA-like voice. And, yeah. I got you on the next one. He would always worry. call the Niskins. Um, and that is sample number 065. Thanks, Taylor. No problem. Let's have a look at that hanging uh, fly trap there while I get sorted out here. Zoom in there if you want. Yeah, can we uh, zoom in on the Is there stock on that it's perched up upon? Right. It. Is there something on it? Uh, I don't know. What's that? I can't. I can't hear you, man. Try this. Uh. I'm not sure what the stock is. No, it yeah. kind of looks. So I think we need to zoom in a little bit, bit more, but looks like a yeah. black coral. I'm not sure. Because I'm already looking north. Right, I think it so. looks like a black coral. Yeah, yeah sticker patties, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's a sticker patties. Then that's proud the sticker patties would be our first observation. Yes. Of a sticker patties. I haven't seen sticker patties in a lot in I, quite I a while. Us. Okay. Thank you. you. Thank you. You wanna go wide just a bit to get the get the beauty shot there, like right about there somewhere in that. <laughs> <laughs> I like the term beauty shot. Glamour shots. Yeah, glamour <laughs> shots. Glamour shot. Let's take a bath. Okay. Please. It can go away. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, till now, we have seen at least six different kinds of black corals. On this uh, one rocks. seamount? Yes, since uh -huh. uh, including our previous watch and uh -huh. this one. Oh. Yeah, sticker patties um, generally they, they go up straight and then form a spiral one or two. It's not exactly a spiral, but they curve like this and then again head up. So some of the webs that we have been seeing in the distance they can be stickobatis but then there are some lepidices bamboos also that tend to do that knot or spiral so uh, but that's a characteristic stickobatis feature and there's a big sea star in the center yeah I can I can just see that she's sitting there and smiling and controlling <laughs> from herself from calling out Holy the sea stepped in her Cheerios bowl there <laughs> No, I'm trying not to say every single one. Why? Because <laughs> we tease her ruthlessly up here. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. There's gonna, uh, the Jane teaser. is going to make a highlight reel of me just going, sea star, sea <laughs> star, sea star. <laughs> we'll have the different sea stars that we have seen. Okay, I'll turn the down lights on. You can zoom in on that one. Seems to be missing a digit. Yeah. Have, is this the species we've seen before? It looks skinnier, you know. Uh, we have seen this before, but uh, it's not a skinnier version of the thicker ones that we were seeing. But we have seen this before, I believe. Oh, sorry, that's supposed to mute. Yes, 
Yeah, it looks like in the family solasteridae or the fiasteridae, it can be. Uh. What would predate a sea star down here? Uh, sometimes some of the smallest sea, sea stars are predated upon by the larger sea stars. Uh, but other than that, sometimes I've seen larger crabs feeding on sea stars, but we don't, we haven't been seeing such crabs here. Uh, but otherwise, probably not. There aren't a lot of organisms predating yeah. upon the sea yeah. stars. Okay, moving on. And I guess the sea stars, when they develop, they start off as larvae, right? Yeah. So I guess also um, there's that whole stage where things could be filter feeding those larvae when they're still so yes. microscopic yes. and small, in addition Absolutely. to eating them when they're adults and um, attached to the bottom, or not attached, but okay. they're crawling. Yeah. On the yeah. surface. Yeah. Would you call it a phytonaster? Yeah. I'm still trying to confirm the ID on that. Yeah. yeah. But there are several that look whitish and like that. It has the like um, velvatia uh, yeah, order, I like the yeah. texture of it. Um, but also kind of like this one. The low faster can be an option. Or ophidiester, but these look, no, I'm not sure. Yeah, the texture of that one looks a bit different. Yeah. Given the it almost looks velvety. Yes. So I think low faster is probably a family solasteridae, I think at least we can call it that. We're seeing some crinoids. Or rather a crinoid. And just for some additional context for our viewers who may not be as familiar with um, what we were talking about before with larvae, so a lot of marine invertebrates, uh, animals that do not have spines, um, they often have a planktonic stage, meaning uh, when they're first born, they're actually small, small little floating creatures, or maybe not floating, but kind of drifting with the currents. Come down back, please. A lot of them are so small, you would need a microscope to see them. And that includes things like sea stars, um, mussels and clams, uh, mm. corals. corals yeah. Yeah. Most invertebrates sea cucumbers. Have, they have a larval stage, a planktonic larval stage. Yeah. And a lot of their stages actually look completely different from the yeah. final adult form, yes. which is really, really interesting if you want to look up kind of those different metamorphoses. Uh, stages. There's some really interesting shapes yeah. out there. It looks like those are two sponges perched up on the stalk of a bamboo coral. And it also has a crinoid. But there's a chrysogorgia on the surface of the rock, a bathypathies on the right, some primnoids with ophiroids, the Volteria sponge. These, uh, these white sponges, if we can have a quick uh, yeah. zoom in on them. Unusual for them to be uh, twins like that, isn't it? Yeah, that's interesting. It, yeah. yeah, you can tell it's on a bamboo coral skeleton, so. Really? It's interesting that why. they've perched themselves on the top. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. And these are bolosoma sponges. Are these leaves. bolosomas? Because. Um, are they, s oh, maybe they're not stalked and yeah, it's just the bamboo it's the coral. Bamboo coral. Okay. These can be hyalonema. Let's see. But we would have to look at the front of it. Which yeah, the, op the poor. Yeah, ravening. the open. What's that? Um, if we could. Um, That's fine. That's oh. fine. Um, if we could get a, a better view of the uh, front face of the, the sponges, where the pores would be. Yeah, so right. Get an ID. Kind of waiting to get a little leash yeah. here. Little no worries. Other. Whenever you have time. The hyalonemas generally have like. Uh, Finger-like projections uh, okay. to Don't hold them at the base, which I'm not seeing, but 
it can be what is this Cofacus Calophagus no. sponge Wait, let me Colophagus spine. Of course, I come around on the tether turn heading. Ficus. So if you come by, you'll have to turn. I don't know. Whatever way. Doesn't make that worse. I think once we have a look at the right. osculum, we would know better. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, I've never, I can't, it's like, yeah. to me that looks like a stalked sponge. But how would it have perched on top of the Yeah, now that coral? I'm looking at this view, it looks like a stalk. Yeah, I don't see any b any nodes anymore, no, so maybe no, we just no. saw yeah, it was just one a dark it's, marking it's a on the stalk. It's a stalked sponge. And uh, yes, this from this angle, it looks like a rosellid, uh, a colophagus, most probably. And. Uh, yeah, initially I was mistaken that it was a stalk of something, but now having a look at the back of the sponge, it looks like that these are stalked sponges, but not sponges on top of a skeleton of a coral. I think uh, I did not realize that we can have branched stalked sponges. Yeah, I didn't either. And that but threw me off. Out just a bit, so we can get zoom out just a bit, we get the uh, branch there. Right, is this nice. something that we typically see uh, in the science chat, uh, um, or is this something? That's this novel. is rare. Asako says that this is rare. It could be that it is... No. It isn't two stalks that are placed close one to This is a very interesting observation. Yeah. Would it be something you, uh, worth taking a sample of some of the tissue? Or um, would photos be enough? I think if it's something we haven't seen before, potentially, if we could get a small portion of it, but let's confirm with so the scientists in the chat. Yeah. And the boat's moving, so. Okay. Okay. We can stop ship. If you yep. want to Do you want me to yep. hold position? Yes, I um. I cannot take a decision on this because this is. Waiting for a word from the chat. Mm -hmm. You can come up just a bit, nice and easy, easy, and get the uh, Atalanta lights out of Hans's uh, still pick there, because it's really annoying. <laughs> Eye in the sky is great, except when it's in the picture. Okay, <laughs> Hans, you can try again if you want. We're not shining a light in your eye. Sorry, Hans. I, I like the light in the background. I get really? a few of those too. Yeah. Uh, the scientists will not like the light in the background. Uh, I am a Carol social scientist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. Uh, we want one of these sponges, is that what I'm hearing? Um, I don't think we need to take a whole sponge, but I think we can collect a portion of it um, oh, yeah. from one of the sponge head to sponge heads, yeah. Uh, so if we could stop the ship and make a collection, that would be great. Yeah, we've already stopped the ship. Oh, great. Okay, that's Thank great. you. Yes. So yeah, we have confirmation from the chat as well that oh, great. it is a good okay. candidate for a collection, but a small portion would be enough. Good. Okay. Sounds good. Right. And uh, for go just, just for a second for me. Just for quick clarification, these are sponges on a dead bamboo coral, or no, these are separate sponges. Sorry, I had to step out for a second. These no, are fine. branched glass sponges. Right. Okay. That yeah. is what makes them weird. And it's rare, at least from whatever I've ever seen, yeah. is I've never seen one kind of fork into two sponge heads like this. So, um, and Asako is also agreeing that this is pretty rare. So. Can zoom in a bit more. How much do you want there? Just gonna How 
how much sponge you guys want? Just a small bit, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, um, at least maybe like a third or a fourth of, of that one sponge head. So All we right. can have enough tissue for analyses. Something like that. Yeah, that looks good. So obviously you're going to uh, be a bit of a tear here because our knives aren't that long. Yep, I cannot do anything. Might get more than we uh, bargained for here. Oh, there it goes. Nicely done. Thanks, Dan. That was beautiful. Cotton candy. What box are we going for? Uh, Taylor? Can, Taylor? Yeah. So we can do starboard box um, C or B. C or B is open. Yeah. Unless you think this might be floaty, um, we could slurp it up also. For, I don't know. Actually, that's not possible, is it? <laughs> now that you have it in your hand. Um, yeah, I think starboard box B or C is fine. Okay, Jacob, you can uh, come up a bit. We're good. Gotcha. We're going to have to move before we... Uh, Let me... Oh, wait, hold on. Provide, uh, please. I'm going to sample tray in real quick. While we move. Uh, Jump the gun on that. You can leave it out. Just All right. come up. Come now. Just come up. So you're about 10 meters away from the wall there. Roger. Uh, you can open that box again for me. Sample tree coming out. I'm going to null my verts here in a minute anyway, so I'm going to float. Uh, well, they're already nulled, so we're, I'm floating up the whole time. I'm going to turn off all the thrusters here, so don't panic. Uh, B is open, is that right? Yep. Yes, B as in boy. And I think these might be a ro like rosellid sponges. Um, What's that? Oh, sorry. Just confirming the ID on the sponge. Oh, sorry. These look very much like the color figures, uh, rosellid sponges. But again, the brand. What is that? Yes. Oh, is it a sinky or is it a floaty? Uh, <laughs> it looks pretty neutral in there. Close it up. Uh, I'm just going to watch it for a minute. So when we open that box again, we need to be aware. Okay. It's pretty neutral. Yeah, but I'm floating up pretty... Uh, and that was sample close box, 066. Close box, close box. Closing, 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 Thanks, closing. Thanks, Taylor. <laughs> if I say it three times, does it close any faster? <laughs> like Dorothy in her magic shoes. What's that? Ah, uh, so Beetlejuice, yeah. Box close. Good okay. to come down whenever. Coming down. Get a little selfie here, though. Uh -huh. yeah. Come right, just a little bit. Coming right. You gotta get a Herc selfie whenever possible. That's probably good. Nicely done. And thanks, Science, for uh, talking a little less so we could focus. Yeah, for sure. Anytime. Sorry if that has been an issue in the past. Please yeah. like, let us know if that is ever an issue. It's, yeah. Uh, I'm going to spin around while we're going down. Right. Uh, no, no, no. No. No spinning, no. No we'll spinning. Wrap that tether right around 6-8. That would be bad. <laughs> then we would be spinning. 
So the sponge sample we took, just like the others, you know, this is from a very special place. This is Papahanao Makuakea Marine National Monument. This is a place of, of origin and a place of return after uh, Hawaiians have passed. And so these samples and even the rocks are considered elders in Kapuna and and alive. And so we're, we're grateful and respectful when we are allowed to take these special samples for study and important science. Mahalo Hans, mahalo Kanaloa again. You come right up now. I'll take the turn out this time because I put it in. Way out of the turns box here. Come right up to like 25 for me. Okay. Okay, here we go. Sorry, back row. We're gonna. I was gonna come around the rock, but lost patience there. I'm gonna just do a spin here and make everyone dizzy. You mean more dizzy? More dizzy. <laughs> so, oh, look, there's three. Must be a uh, one of Mia's siblings. <laughs> Never know what you're gonna find when you spin. Uh, where does that put me at? Nine is, I gotta come around one yeah, more time. Yeah, one more time. Oh, come up a bit more? Come yep. up, come up. We wanna stretch it out when we do that. Compass is a good thing to look at. Doesn't make you so dizzy. done that before and had to rush out of the van and throw up. <laughs> Who? Who did? I have. Really? Yeah, because bad things happened. Oh. <clears throat> okay, all our numbers are less than one or two, which turns police won't be giving me any tickets. I'm going to face your heading. Here we are, we'll come get a close up of the, uh, the triclops here. Or is it quad? I think it's quad. Good to come down just a bit. Yeah, Raj. We're still at the relatively low level of oxygen saturation from the last watch and what yeah. they saw change. It's Just five on there. Still, There's, slowly yeah. coming up. Yeah, sometimes what happens is below a certain depth, I have to check the depths because uh, there we have the deep water currents which have higher oxygen con concentrations coming in. And as we continue rising, then uh, we go beyond the level of the deep water currents and move up. So there can be a drop in oxygen there and mm -hmm. above that. Uh, okay. so the vertical oxygen profile, it increases okay. after a certain depth where we have the... Right, I know it's not consistent one yeah. way or the other on the way down, it changes. Yeah. I'm gonna come around here, Hans, so you could, if you want a DSC of the... Uh, Roger. What do you call it, five? What is that word? Why can't I remember? It appears like this one has four. Four, yeah. yeah. I thought there was just three, but... There's, we just five. It there's five actually. There's a small oh. one there. And the top one is also splitting. Wow. That's okay. beautiful. Uh, one more. One more. If I get, let me take my hands off the controls. Okay. This is definitely sponges sponging. Yeah, I'm not seeing one like this in the field. Did you get it either. There? Got it. Thank you. Yeah. 
got some good pictures of it. Roger. <laughs> you can you can move it when you need to, but it is your fidget thing. <laughs> That's why there's a pile of them over there. Is there a better term than calling Jacob them sponge heads? Or, like, it's the automatic, you, you know, sponge your terminology. Hand on the clutch or the gear shift or the brake. I mean, that is the sponge itself, right. other than the stock. Right. I drive an automatic so. and still do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I guess I could five, say five sponges. Five branches on the main stock. I don't know other than <laughs> I don't know what to do. Yeah, sponge head seeds. I guess sponges are hard to have that anatomy because they're all uh, asymmetrical a lot of times, right? Yeah. So. And honestly, I mean, I had never seen branch so used to like calling it oh, sponges for sure. This is the first for me. Yeah. That's so cool. Sorry, Very talking cool. to myself. I just did to myself what's a famous one to uh, mess with the next pilot on crew change. She hit auto XY with no <laughs> inputs in, so it's like, where's the ROV not going anywhere? <laughs> you gotta, yeah. You drive an automatic, Jacob? I do drive an automatic, uh. and it's only because my wahine at home does not want to. Uh, uncle's got a manual. I, I want a manual so bad. Sky, if you're listening, we need a manual. It's an endangered species. It is. They are. I love the feeling of just putting it in neutral and just... It's called real driving. Check it out. <laughs> Kill the headlights <laughs> and put it in neutral. Uncle Hans is coming at me. <laughs> Looks like there's probably a small uh, mushroom coral recruit on the rock surface there. There's another sea star, uh, a couple of crinoids on the primnoids, mm. probably Paristanella. Nice, nice group there. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. Ophiroids. Ooh, that sea star might be Two in sea stars, I think, right? That might be in a prime time to see the other side of it there. It looks like a... And that's feeding on the coral, the big, the bigger one. You want to zoom on the anything here? Uh, we can have a quick look, uh, zoom in on the uh, sea star to see what it is exactly feeding upon. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna come around the other side. Okay. You might be able to see the gross bits yes, there. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that would be great. There's also a small chrysogorgia, maybe two, one under the primnoid, one. Oh, actually multiple, one, two, three, four chrysogorgias. This tiny spot which has a lot of diversity. And there's a hemichorallium as well. Oh yeah, this is gonna make me physically ill. Look at your compass. <laughs> <laughs> Hans, I applaud you for driving a manual on Oahu with all that traffic. You are wild. That traffic is nothing compared to DC. When I drove there, I was like, wow. Jacob, even my wife's car is a manual. I'm oh. just saying. I was going to say, I guess that's where I can one up you, too. I drive manual. You oh. drive a manual? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh bruh. Even... Not in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Show your bits. Yeah, it's feeding on a small bamboo coral that's there. Oh, and we can see the inverted stomach. <laughs> that little that's thing in the center, right? Look at the yes. <laughs> there's also the some more barnacles. <laughs> yes, there's a, there's a couple of barnacles. <laughs> uh, we have some ophiroids and the sea star feeding on the bamboo coral polyps. That is a great view of a sea star uh, feeding. I think it's, again, one of the hippasters. Uh, Dan is having a field day. Is anyone else having? Oh. 
Never mind. Never. There we go. I was having issues taking captures, but now it's working. Okay. Uh, so that looks like a bamboo coral. Uh, oh, there's a small shrimp also on the right. Uh, if we just if we can turn a little bit to the left and have a quick look at the bigger fan that's there, just to confirm that it is. Uh, oh, there's a cup. Coral. There are two cup corals. Nice cup coral. Yeah. So the cup corals compensate for the inverted stomach. Oh, right. and it's pulling back. I feel like the stomach kind of makes me imagine a tongue going like bleh, <laughs> <laughs> like sticking the, same the thing. tongue out. Yeah. <laughs> it is a, b a beautiful image and a beautiful observation yeah. as well, a wonderful observation of the deep sea because we rarely get to see okay, you predation. Okay, slowly zoom out there. Oh, and there's a shrimp on the side. Yeah. Just hiding. Beautiful crinoid. And if we can quickly zoom at the base of this uh, bigger fan here. Roger. Okay. Before Should moving away. So that looked like uh, that the, the big the sea star was okay. That's good. That's good. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Oh. Thank you so much. The sea star was definitely a goniasterid, but I'm always confused between mm. Cerciaster uh evo evo plus soma and uh, the cup corals while we're here too hypersteria it is very there. difficult for me to differentiate between those three so i would go just with uh when you asked it these little guys are my favorite oh those are beautiful cup corals yeah you those can are see the favorite? tissue on these yeah. Yeah. yeah the one we collected the other day by with the rock sample, you could not. Did you get one with the rock yes, sample? Yes, yes. There's one. Okay, you can go away. One of my favorites. Uh, one of the jobs we did in the uh, Discovery Corridor on the East Coast, we collected I don't know, dozens and dozens of those guys with the manipulator, with the parallel jaws. Oh, yeah. They were wow. doing uh, DNA. Analysis. So. so, Upashan, are each of those one polyp, like one huge polyp? Yes, those uh. are single polyps and those are solitary uh, scleractinians. Wow. It's, the, it's like the loner coral <laughs> compared to other corals that are usually colonial, right? Mm. They get quite big. Uh, you know, groupings, and there, there's some spots where, like, uh, where they're I mean, probably a different kind, obviously, but um, as they perpetuate and then expire, they drop off. So, like, the hash below the cliff was oh, just, yeah. you, know, like you could scoop it, literally. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, so I think I've seen something like that in the Atlantic also, where the coral rubble is just dead. Wow. Cup corals, and you have... Oh, so just like tons of cup coral skeletons? Yeah, yeah. 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 That's amazing. The whole boneyard. Well, that's again a batty patties. RCA instruments they brought up uh, in Oregon there had been uh, moored 2,500 meters of water, but the mooring was only down uh, a couple hundred meters, and it was the bottom was absolutely covered with cup corals that were like palm size, huge. Were they a bit translucent? Yeah, the fin I think the, I the fins are like mm. you know really really fine yeah fence like a almost like a cooler was that in 2020 uh no that was uh last year i think i remember watching some of that we were uh yeah we had the instrument on the deck and the scientists had filled their sample collection and they had to you know all that stuff had to be removed to refurbish yeah. the instrument so so I remember, Excellent. yeah, people getting really excited about cup curls, and then there was a someone with a British accent who was really into glass sponges. Yeah. So, 
I, I learned about those. Giant instrument on the deck, and everyone was out there with handfuls of collections. Yeah. The lab really stank currently like crazy. On the control room, where they were everywhere. Oh man. <laughs> Cup corals are beautiful another structure. group of uh, corals which are very difficult to ID uh, based on morphology. Mm. I didn't realize there were so many different. Uh, different That's ones. a beautiful lepidiasis with a chrysogorgia, and there is a fly trap anemone in front at the base of the bamboo coral. Uh, looks like it's going to be um, a little steeper here and uh, maybe diverse with these bigger rocks, so maybe we try a 20 S meter. Yeah, I was going to, yeah. Dense. Uh, you, re you ready now? I think so, yeah. Ready. You move, we'll be over there. Bridge nap. Can we please step two zero at three two five? Thank you. Upasana, do we know about like the evolution of these? Are cup corals kind of like an in-between, like anemones, which are solitary, but then uh, stony corals that are, or sorry, if you don't like that term, I know you said you no, don't no, like no. the term soft corals. No, 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 yeah. Um, cup corals are scleractinians, so they're right. hexagorals. Right. Uh, and uh, I, I'm not that familiar with the phylogeny of the scleractinians. Uh, I can look it up, but I do not think that they are basal to the uh, other more branched scleractinians that we see. But then again, phylogeny is an ongoing work. Yeah, I can look up the really latest good. ones and give you a better answer. Okay, no pressure. I was just curious because yeah. I. Like this solitary reminded me like an enemies, but it's still yes, got that yeah. stony skeleton. So kind of interesting, but I'm sure there's all a diversity of cnidarians, these um, creatures that have those stinging cells in them, with all different kinds of like s strategies and um, life histories and body body forms. Bring your head to the right for us. All right, thank you. And just uh, sharing a shout out from the chat to um, our front row. They were watching all the nail biting sampling and hoping it would go all right. And they were so glad to see that uh, sponge was um, able to be sampled and stay intact and upright and just a really respectful job and really impressed. So thank you so much for your skillful manipulation of those uh, manipulator arms. <laughs> thank you for the shout out. Yeah, I was at your seat there. <laughs> Discovery corridor, so east of Halifax, somewhere. and um, it's a high high current, really challenging site to hold on a vertical cliff. And there was a thousand-year-old black coral, and again we were doing the DNA thing, and uh, we got just a little greedy and wanted the full 10 centimeters, and it, it was, you know, fairly large, bushy. Uh, black coral and 
We didn't have the coral snippy jaws, so the technique, we have the parallel jaws, which are sharp on the edge, so the technique is to uh, grab a piece and do a quick uh, twist of the of the wrist, and that usually snaps off the piece. We have this array on the front, put all the little, you know, pieces in for DNA. And uh, the entire animal came off of the wall on the cliff. And the control room just, it, w it was complete pandemonium. People were yelling and crying, and yeah. they wanted to turn off the cameras. And um, So I'm sitting there through all of this with this, you know, Christmas tree in the jaw held on still by just 10 centimeters. <laughs> oh. I was like, oh, one, I heard one in the background, put it back, put it back. It's like, I can't put it back. I just ripped it off the wall. So in the end, um, we, of course, decided to, you know, make the best of it and recover the entire animal, which we so literally, like, stuffed it in the bio box, bits hanging out everywhere. But they also had on deck, they had a 20-foot um, a van full of uh, aquariums that were chilled down to uh, the same temperature that we were sampling at, and they were putting uh, live samples in there. And it just so happened that that uh, black coral was spawning, so it spawned wow. while they had it in the tank. Oh, they, wow. They wound up, uh, they were able to... Uh, have a whole bunch of baby corals. Wow. By the end of the cruise, they were, you know, attaching. Oh, oh my god! That's so nice. So we, everyone had black coral named after them. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, that is a wonderful story. Yeah. That's a nice little spot. Yes. Yeah, we were just crossing. Uh, Another mound which had quite high We're diversity. We're just finishing the ship movement in two meters. Uh, I'm going to slide this over. There was a brucinjid, uh, a bamboo, a lepidiasis, most probably a couple of uh, primnoids, small recruits of hemichorallium. Here we are seeing two, three beautiful crinoids, very aesthetically placed in a triangle and at the center we have a hemichorallium, two hemichoralliums actually. There's a brisingid on the rock there. Uh, mushroom coral anthomastis or pseudanthomastis. Um, some uh, primnoid and a tube anemone, a serianthid in the background. Uh, and the fans have a bunch of ophuroids on them. It's probably a sea star as well. and. We would, if possible, like to have a look at this uh, tube anemone in the back. All right, yeah. And there's cup corals as well. Okay. Third. It's an acting area. Then oh, and the there's like an urchin down there, it looks like, yeah. or something that looks spiky. Where? Is that the anemone? Oh, the anemone, sorry. Uh, yeah. I missed that earlier. Okay, yeah. push in on the tube and anemone. Oh, stop it with the camera. Yeah, We're that's gonna beautiful. We're going to turn on the downlight here. Oops, what did I do? That was on. Is that a rock under, underneath the white bit there? The white, yeah. I. I cannot understand what the white is. Oh, would this be, did you guys need soil samples or sediment samples? Uh, I don't think this would be deep enough to put a push core. Okay. I just noticed it wasn't all rock right there. Okay. 
Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, so something interesting uh, that I I have read this paper a couple of times, but I didn't want to comment before checking. So, in continuation to the question you asked before, if the cup corals are uh, basal to the other uh, scleractinians or the other hexacorals, the what is interesting is that the Fish human there, enemy that we saw, the Seriathids, they are actually basal to the other uh, groups of hexacorals uh, hexa that we have. Wow. So it is the Seriathids, okay, then good. we have yes. the Zoanthids, then the Actinarians, the uh, sea anemones, uh -huh. black corals, corallimorphs, uh, scleractinians. Okay, you go in, thanks. And within the scleractinians, this tree here, uh, has cup corals, but uh, yeah, it will take me a bit of time to figure out what's happening yeah, within the correct no Indian. <laughs> it's a big tree, but yes, it is the tuber enemies which are really? sister wow. to the rest of the hexacorals. And when you say we're good for another twenty. Yeah. Sorry, when you say tube anemone, can you explain like the tube? Yes. Part? So yeah. the serianthids, the one that we saw right now, th they are commonly called the tuber enemies. And they are also uh, uh, they are also notoriously difficult to ID beyond being tube enemies. So what happened? The the darker part that we saw was the top part of the polyp structure, which is which remains above ground. But the rest of it, they form an external tube-like structure that remains out inside the sediment. And sometimes you can see the top part of it. Also, it's, it looks like a star. Uh, so I think that is how they got the name and uh, I do see those sea stars as we pass over them. <laughs> yeah, there are two at least that I can see. Fly over. And a couple of crinoids and uh, one of the major morphological, one of the significant morphological traits is to, to observe those you basically have to cut open the tubes and look oh. at the gastrodermal cavity which is inside so it is very difficult to uh, or use genetics obviously yeah but uh, that's why it's very difficult to id them just by looking at right. a cup core at a uh, tube in anime yeah i think it's a general strategy in the ocean is like tubes in the sediment yeah. Right, a lot of organisms live in tubes in the sediment. I'm going to come to your left just a bit there. Just back towards the uh, three something heading. 325, thank you. Yes, the closest relative to the scleractinian corals or the stony corals are the corallimorpharies, which look like anemones, but I, I love the common name. It's called the jester's hat. Oh, so <laughs> it did look like that. Yeah. At the end of the tentacles, you have like little uh, white up pom-pom uh, oh, ball wow. like things, and then they're sister to the black corals. Uh -huh. Then the sea anemones, which are sister. These are then sister to the zoanthids and then the serianthids. Wow, so. so much diversity. Yeah. And that is interesting, right? We would think that if uh, organisms have a similar overall morphology or external morphology, that they would be more closely related to one another. Right. That's how, that seems most logical, but it is not. I mean, most, I think the patterns we are, see are most logical, but it, uh, seems the most obvious answer, right? If something looks like it in an right. everything, they would be grouped together. But that is not the case because we, uh, there are s several other morphological traits that are part of each of these groups. And also we s uh, see that some uh, ex overall morphologies coming up uh, multiple times yeah. separately in a phylogeny and uh, or lost multiple times so the patterns of evolutions are not uh, 
the most obvious way right. that we think. And yeah. That is where phylogeny and taxonomy differs because right. it has been differing. We are trying to bridge those gaps now yeah. because earlier we were just looking at the morphology and trying to ID them. What is yeah, that blue thing? Zoom? It looks like <laughs> a, it might be a net. Yeah. Oh. I was, I was hoping it's, I'm hoping it's not line. more trash because the yeah. last time we saw something like this, it was just garbage. Yeah, it was some like netting yeah, maybe. Push in a bit. Mm. Yeah, it's a line. It is. Yeah, it is trash. Trash on the primnoid. We have cup corals and uh, chrysogorgids at the base. And the Vedalogorgia in the background. Just going to turn it on the uh, down light there for the Is DFC. it knotted? Is it knotted? Is it a uh, net? It is. A scrap of net? It looks like Not. a line to me. It looks like a braided. Yeah, but if it's, you Plastic. know, line and right, knotted like into that, yeah. squares. Yeah. Make yeah, a push in a bit more if you want. If there There's a black part of it also, which can be just that it has discolored. Looks more like hand line. Yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Does you look like hand line. You bet. It's anthropomorphic. I took a photo. Lots of knots, though. Right? Yeah, it's it's, it's got a lot of knots. I think it's a small scrap of uh, of net. Oh yeah, I can see the knots now. But yeah, you know, the only thing diagnostic would be the size of the mesh. Yeah, it's a big, big knot, big squares. Yeah, that looks like a younger metallo bird here with a squat lobster in it. Yeah, the eyes of oh, that squat okay. lobster are so, so wide. <laughs> particularly striking. Can we put the lasers on uh, the net and see if we can estimate the mesh size? Yeah, you're going to zoom back in there. Yeah, Make hard to do. If you get a DSC with that, let like me put 10. it over there. The biggest part, this part is probably like 12 or 13 centimeters where we have the lasers currently on. They might show up in the digital stills, can't we? There. Yeah, I took another. You know, I, I guess it's less than 10 centimeters mesh, but that's a pretty big mesh. Yeah, the gap is less than. Very eight. big mesh. Eight centimeter? All right. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Go away, thanks. Uh, so the metallogorgia in the background is probably not metallogorgia. Uh, Melanotrichus, because it didn't have the ophiroid with it, but it is a metallogorgia, and the uh, squat lobster would be in the genus uh, Eurotychus. Euro Apparently, this is uh, not the first net. Uh, of this color that we've seen on this dive. I know we also saw some, is that this dive, the orange? Yeah, that the that orange, we saw? yeah. yeah. Um, but this, uh, yeah, Asako's saying that we saw um, another one on this dive oh, as well. Wow. Right, I we didn't, we didn't get 20. a, didn't estimate the mesh size on that one, but that's the only thing I think that would tell us information. Yeah. I don't know, Asako might know more. Yeah, I went, made sure to mark the observation with a, the different type as trash and debris, uh, so we can go back and get a, a mesh size. It did look a lot finer from what I remember on, on our watch, the one that we saw, but. Yeah, uh -oh. uh, there's this. a beautiful rosellid sponge. Um. It's neon coloration. Yeah. By a Pernowin. Push in on the uh, yellow sponge there, please. This would also be in the genus Colophagus, as the, the same one uh, as the branched uh, rosellid, but dif obviously a different uh, species. Okay, thanks. It's George Jetson's chair. 
I was just thinking of that. I, I thought that reference would be too, yeah. <laughs> too, too old for no, some people no. in this room. Like a futuristic looking yeah. swivel it chair swivel kind of thing. Chairs, yeah. <laughs> Especially that yellow color. <laughs> for me, I want forever be a Dr. Seuss sponge. <laughs> Named by a geologist. From so Oregon. So many of these things are like Dr. Oh, Seuss. Oh, there's a big one. Yeah. You can see the stock. Oh, yeah. The upper, uh, oh, in the upper Adelanto now. It's a big color figures. Looks like a direct TV satellite dish. Right <laughs> <here>. <laughs> That's yeah. Does look like a chair now that you've said it. I cannot unsee it. <laughs> it's like instead of cloud watching, it's sponge watching. <laughs> what do you see in the sponge? <laughs> we have 10 meters. Uh, right. That's Roughly. so beautiful, internal structure, internal pattern. Wow, yeah. The pores are so mesmerizing. Come down five, please. Down five. Let's make it 10. Make your altitude 20 there. Keep an eye on it. Roger. So we have um, a comment from Asako in the chat that this is a bolosoma. It's a bolosoma? Um, I think it opens differently than the other ones we uh, were yeah. seeing. Instead of from the back the side, back, yeah. it's the front face. We have bought so much. Let's check. Yeah, and Lights they have the neon coloration here as well. Oh. There is someone in there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like right. Little. Right. I keep forgetting that in Roselle, the front is. Uh, me too, yeah. yeah. But I think now we'll get it. If it We've is seen both of the same it, watch yes. now. Right, thank you so much. And result is the back part which is covered. Right. This would be a just trying to so get a foot down here, but he might be too tall. Well, shrimp coming but out. Let's say hello. B. Yeah, too tall for me to land and we'll hit the top of the vehicle. The color on this one is really like SpongeBob sponge. <laughs> I definitely was thinking that too. I was not. <laughs> then again, I had to watch SpongeBob for every day, all right time, <laughs> many years. With your kids? Yeah. You act like you're saying it like it's a bad thing. <laughs> All these years I've known you, Dan, I didn't know you had kids. <laughs> Teenagers now. Aww. Aww. Yeah, they have a cool dad. Okay, you don't like going up. Thank you. For no. my film no. school film thesis, I made um, like a human reenactment of SpongeBob. <laughs> Oh, can you hear me now? Yep. A little bit louder, maybe? I'm sorry, did you say a human reenaction of SpongeBob? Yeah, for my <laughs> film thesis project. I missed <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Human SpongeBob characters. For your thesis? <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's did you fun. get it A plus, 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 plus? I did. <laughs> Do you have a copy of that we can watch? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Asking the important <laughs> questions. <laughs> Might be somewhere. Yeah, Might yeah, be on the hard drive at home. Get way out of the box here, off to the left. Now look at you making videos of the deep sea. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
started from the bottom and only here. <laughs> yeah, there are a couple of more of those. <laughs> Literally. Uh, I'm going to have to come down yeah. the hill here a bit. People, yeah. it's uh, way out of the box here. Started from so bikini cool. bottom, now we're here. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. Oh no, I was just going to share a little story yeah, whenever. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, think, I think we're good for 20 minutes. Yeah. Whenever we're showing like creatures to kids and we show them the sponge and we're like, what animal is this? And they're like, well, that's an animal. And then I go like, it lives in a pineapple under the sea. And then they're all like, sponge, pop, square, pass. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds awesome. <laughs> yeah, and at one of our marine science camps, we had really little kids, and at the very last day, we wanted to do like a big, you know, send off kind of festival, or not festival, but like celebration. And um, we couldn't let them play really intense, like outdoor games, because they're like little, little tiny kids, but we would have them play SpongeBob Dodge sponge <laughs> <laughs> and they would just throw wet sponges at each other instead of dodgeballs oh, that's fun. <laughs> it was so cute <laughs> i think it's uh, again one of those incendiary sponges the m Posh and I, you're a little quiet oh sorry yes i think it's again one of those uh amphidus cosida the elephant the poly pogolan yeah, Polypopagon, I think. Polypopagon. Poly, poly, polyopogon. Oh, poly what? Po P-O-L-I-O-P-O-G-O-N. <laughs> so I really need to start practicing my pronunciations of these. I just do like polypopagon. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I looked it up. Polyopogon. Polypopagon. Nope. Polyopopagon. P-O-L-I-O-P-O-G-O-N. It'd be nice if they had the enunciation, the enunciation like, yeah. right next to the name. Because I don't, I don't think it's very much common knowledge that we can yeah. speak. And that. I, I think I've heard scientists say the same scientific names, but in different ways different too. Yeah. So yeah. I think oh, everyone's yeah. kind of just definitely heard it as polypopagon yeah. for so long. So. Yeah, it's down just a bit. What's that? It's a beautiful sponge. That. Come it down is. just a bit. No, it's talking every day. Beautiful chrysogorgias uh, behind I'm it. To see inside the I like the crino. It's just. Little crowns. Right. <laughs> Some primnoids in the background. Hans, did uh, Val do a handoff with you about rocks? Yeah. She said up above um, mm -hmm. around, around 1,500 meters. Okay. Oh, there's a bamboo coral. We had another comment here about that previous sponge saying it looked like if the moon was made of cheese <laughs> with that, <laughs> that porous texture. Yeah, the bowl is over. Now the Voltaria sponges, Chrysogorget, Black Coral, are Crinoid. You, are you white there? I guess you are. This. Another one of those Polyopogon. From Noah's. This is what I need to learn. Simply the the categorization and the um, the, the the scheme schematic to be to be able to look things up for fun, you know. Yeah. But, but you have to know the families and genus and. This is very useful. The Benthic Animal Guide is very useful, but I also feel that it, it needs to be updated a bit. Uh, but this was a great effort by Noah to put this together. Yeah, I'm really thankful for my freshman uh, biology class in college that taught me uh, about all of these taxa and 
right, how to right. yeah, search through this to it, it's very helpful once you know the, the basics yeah i'm sure there's you know sort of beginners guides out there for yeah you just um if you close all of these then it's easier that you just go by the phylum and i think it's like a game right you go through it mm -hmm. really a lot and then kind of starts making sense and for any viewers tuning in, um, the guide that we're looking at, I believe, is the NOAA Ocean Exploration Benthic Deep Water Animal Identification Guide. Yes. So if you just look that up online, um, just look up Benthic Deep Water Animal Identification Guide or um, uh, Deep Sea you know, Animal Guide, NOAA, um, NOAA, then you'll be able to open up this guide and then anyone can view it to look through the pictures um, and kind of get a better idea of all the different types of creatures we're looking at. What's that? Yeah, I think we're good There's for another hemichorallium. Oh, that's a big anemone. It's quite a big anemone. We're coming up on another one of those uh, bolosomas. Changes from yellow to white. Oh yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Are the lasers on? Uh, yeah, they're on. Yeah. Oh, there they are. Yeah, we're d okay. There's some chrysogorgids, uh, a beautiful anemone, a batipatis, a bamboo coral web, probably lepidosis, primnoid colonies. Just looking uh, side hill there, downhill. Yeah, yeah that turn back into the hill here. That scale issue throws me. I think we're I think we're closer. Things are smaller. No, they're bigger. <laughs> we're, we're further. Yeah, absolutely. There's a small mushroom coral at this, almost at the center of the screen. Uh, a small bolosoma in the back. I think there's another bamboo coral with a sea star on it. A little now out, currently out of frame. Crinoids. Yeah, we have a sea star again feeding on the Probably bamboo coral over there. So, do you think that the that sea star probably ate all of the missing polyps, or at least it has contributed substantially? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's quite uh, impressive if it did eat yeah. that much. Yeah, and uh, from from hearing other people discuss and uh, I think reading some articles, so sometimes these sea stars they just remember, they continue living on one such uh, coral fan and. It's not that they're feeding on it at this rate, at a very high rate. Sometimes if we, if we can come back to the same spot in a couple of years, you'll see that it is still there. But it has fed, like it has already eaten more of the polyps. Okay, they can remain yeah, one on a fan for like years. For yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's like it's fine. <laughs> I think that's... Like it's not really fond of height. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like hanging on to the deer. <laughs> Wait a minute, do we know that? <laughs> no, I'm assuming that from where it is. It looks like that it is afraid of the height and gradualizing the yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and gradually making its way up. Yeah, it's interesting that we do that to try to connect and understand them. Uh, Although they are very different. And oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good they don't process it that way. Oh, is that a metallogorgia? Yeah, a metallogorgia or a chrysogorgia. Looks like a metallogorgia. I love this color of these yeah. stars. I'm very confused between uh, how to differentiate between the Sosiaster, Evoplosoma, and the Hipaster. Because all of them can, they're all goniasterids. Yeah. But uh, I have to look that up a little bit more or need somebody to explain it to me how they're different. Because Sosiastas, all of them can have uh, this red-orange color. 
and have to look up how and why they are different. Okay, go in, please. That's beautiful. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, we've been seeing quite a few of these predation events. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if sea stars are also extra easy to anthropomorphize just because they um, have the like five, it kind of looks like a head, arms and legs. So it looks like, you know, it's slumped yeah. over or sitting or um, grabbing onto things. And most of us have seen SpongeBob and Patrick, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> of course. Honestly, SpongeBob was never a cartoon that I really liked. <laughs> I don't know why I was not a SpongeBob fan. Was, you know, it could Maybe. be a lot sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> little, bits and little bits and pieces, yes, definitely. Another one of those poly, polyopogon, the elephant here sponges. There's a oh. paragorgia, a black coral. Can we have a quick zoom on this one in the center, if possible? Sure. Yeah. Good eye. I think. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. There's a brucinjid under the ledge. Or I should start. Yelling bazinga. <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I've done it like in, uh, when we are not on light. Like, totally kidding. You can yell bazinga if you want. <laughs> <laughs> like, our, like our last watch, all these black corals are small. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there are certain kinds which are uh, small. It's because they're small, it kind of makes me think that it's a staropath, given, given how dense oh, okay. the branchings are. Yeah, they're, they're, that's their size of yeah. the species. I got it. Yeah, and there are some, there's the uh, leopathies, which can be small as well. But somehow the branching is... Okay. I cannot explain. Yeah, I need a to start black coral. studying the, yeah. the images between Go those ahead. two black yes. corals. And I don't think we have good... Uh, Images for each of, of the updated species on the benthic animal guide, so it makes it different. Yeah, the images for the staropathies look more red mm -hmm. in coloration too. So it's but I've seen orange staropathies. Okay. They differ. So yeah, that's a beautiful. So given how bushy, it, I Thick, cannot explain. Yeah. Dense. Yes. Yes. So it's a beautiful black coral colony and anthracnotheria with a squat lobster on it. A couple of cup corals in the background, uh, bathypathies. Like for example, the bathypathies that we are seeing here is more whitish in comparison to the more orangish or dark reddish that we have been seeing more commonly. Uh, there's a small uh, flytrap anemone also in the background. And we had some beautiful primnoid fans in front of this one. Thank you, thank you so much. We can continue moving. Thank you. And there's a heavy coralium with uh, ophiroids, yeah, uh, sponge. A little bit there to look into the hill this is a, a beautiful more. place. Yes. Sponge with crinoids, the pargon. Exactly. A little spot of very high diversity. Um, so oh is this van. Oh, I got my van. Absolutely. Absolutely. Chrysogorgids. Ophiroids, the Brasingid, sea star. I don't think we have seen any basket stars. No, like not that I can no. recall. No, not at least on not on during our watches. We've definitely seen an increase in diversity of sponges, though, yes. compared to previous dives. Yeah, and also uh, previous to last night, we're seeing more sponges, and uh, primnoids are. Uh, dominant now than the yeah rather than the bamboos. In some places, it's an equal distribution. Yeah, there's another one of the sea stars feeding on a bamboo coral over there. Uh, another bolosoma. Chrysogorgias. Uh, come kind of under you into the south here. There, we come around and so we can look up the hill here. Seems like less um, dead coral skeletons compared to. Yeah, in that's dive, a good. Right? That's a good point. Yes, I think we were also on a precarious ledge, like, or 
pledge like protrusion also last night. Yeah, maybe sediment too, like maybe. the rock yeah. is a little more visible. I mean, it, we don't have a measurement on that really, but just visually. Um, we had a viewer asking about what is the average lifespan of these sea stars we're seeing at these depths? Is that something we have any idea of really? Um, I don't. I'm sure people have. <laughs> I will look that up. Okay. You know, this is why okay. I like this part where we come up with, we are discussing different aspects and questions. What's that? that? That makes me also look up right. uh, different things. I'm going to, uh, I'll come to the north now. Well, the viewer says, mahalo in advance for <laughs> looking that up. So. Oh, my God. And we are about halfway through this watch. Um, so just another recap for our new um, visitors uh, joining us in exploring this unnamed seamount. Um, this is another dive in the Ala Almoana Kaiui expedition uh, in Papa Hanaumokuakea Marine National Monument. Um, we have been going up this unnamed seamount um, near Curie Atoll, uh, gathering rock samples um, to determine the, uh, help determine how this um, seamount formed and um, looking at these biological communities as well. Um, Papahanaumo Kuakea is the largest marine protected area in the U.S. and we're really, really grateful to be able to um, come see this amazing um, these amazing underwater landscapes and uh, creatures and everything the ocean has to share with us. Um, we're really uh, grateful to be able to um, gather some samples to learn more and um, be in this really sacred space for Native Hawaiians. Um, if you are interested in learning more about all the amazing ways that um, Native Hawaiians have contributed to this expedition and many others. Um, Nautilus uh, Live or Ocean Exploration Trust recently um, released a video um, called A Shared Voyage of Ocean Exploration. And um, it, the video is all about how Ocean Exploration Trust has been working to build a, an equitable and ethical relationship with Papahanaumo Kuakea um, and working with the Native Hawaiian Cultural Working Group uh, 20, please. The video specifically uh, features some of the Kanaka Oivi, the, the Native Hawaiians who have been um, participating on the expeditions in many different roles, including um, uh, working as science communication fellows, C4 mapping interns, um, resource monitors, cultural li liaisons, um, ocean science, and um, collecting. Uh, and working in the wet lab, so all sorts of different functions aboard. Um, and it's a really, really great video to learn more um, about um, really this amazing place that we're in and the importance of it and um, learning about indigenous-led uh, research and science. So um, definitely check that out. Again, it's called A Shared Voyage of Ocean Exploration, available on um, Nautilus Live's YouTube page. Yeah, thank you so much uh, for that, Carol. And uh, a quick look into the age of sea stars suggests that uh, average lifespan is around 30 to 35 years, but that is in the shallower waters. So I couldn't find uh, anything on the deep sea sea stars this quickly. I'll have to look into primary literature, but I'm quite sure that in the deep sea they can live longer, okay. or if not, they're at least... 30 to 35 years is the standard. Right, yeah. Lifespan. Yeah, maybe in the deep sea they're living longer because of that slow metabolism, right, in the yeah. cold water. Um, but yeah, I guess there's also so many things that can affect it, like um, disease, predator, 
predators, uh, availability of food sources, so it's a little difficult to say. Uh, well, that should do for now. Look to your right, just a little too for me. Right there. That'll be good for another 20, I think. Yes, please. And um, earlier when we saw that uh, blue net, we were talking about the mesh size. Um, could you share with our viewers, I think Hans, you were talking about if we could estimate that uh, mesh size. Um, do you mind helping to share um, what kind of information that can tell you? Yes. <laughs> Please. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, once again, I'm, I'm going elaborate. out on one of these limbs and then... Uh, <laughs> So I know that, that the watchers and listeners out there know much more about this than I do. I am not a fisherman. I am not, uh, uh, but I do know that there are different size mesh for different catches and different uses. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes that's part of the uh, regulatory process or permitting process, mm, uh, yeah. depending on what the target species is and what the environment is. You know, they could, they could say, you know, this size mesh and, and, not, and not that, you know, the larger mesh, of course, for a larger catch, um, smaller mesh, catching everything, right. and may maybe above and beyond what you're targeting. So that's just simply one of the diagnostic features of just a little bit of scrap like that. I think what we're looking at are portions of net that are drifting mm -hmm. in the Pacific, as we all know, um, debris and, and, and to castaway nets, ghost nets are a big problem. In the monument, there's been an ongoing effort to remove drift nets from the coral reefs closer into the shallows and the right. atolls. So and there's a debris program where divers and uh, often free divers go up there, you know, on charter vessels and collect tons and tons of wow. nets from those reefs. And of course, those nets aren't being used right. in the monument. They're drifting in from elsewhere. Right. And so on sea mounts like this that are not flat that are you know elevated uh, steep ridges you know these are pieces of drifting net that are mm. simply out there it's been a very pristine environment it's wonderful to see these remote places in this special area uh, because they are so pristine but it's our cultural footprint it's what we've done to the oceans over the decades and centuries that there is enough out there that even here we'll see pieces of things come in and entangle themselves and land. So, um, yeah, it's yeah. All right. That is uh, very beautiful. Thanks for sharing that, Hans. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Hans. Thank you. Another one of those polyopogons, uh, black coral. Neopathies slash staropathies, crinoids, chrysogorgia. Probably there was a resingid. So are staropathies highly branched? Can they be here? Or yes. Okay. Yes. They can be uh, very highly branched and more bushy. And yeah, because these look like, I don't know. Branched a little like differently. Yeah. yeah. And this also looks like probably lost a few branches. I don't know. Hemicoradium. 
Batista. On the rock. Oh, there's a very small one on the left. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was looking at the... Oh. Let me go on the asteroid. And then there's a big uh, barnacle. I think I'll struggle. Hemi Coralu. With Ophiroids, there looks like there are lots of cup corals on the surface. Another uh, one of those top come up five, but <coughs> Look to the left of the hill. Let's So, Kara, since we were talking a little bit about SpongeBob and how we're seeing all the sponges and starfish, um, and SpongeBob is actually one of my favorite cartoons, but it does have um, a history that I wanted to share. Yeah, please go and ahead. And that's that Bikini Bottom is actually named for a real place. So mm. there's a place called Bikini Atoll in the Marshall Islands. And um, it was the site of nuclear testing in the 80s. Um, so they detonated 67 nuclear bombs there. Wow. 67. Yeah. 67. That is a huge number. And basically the people, there were people living in those islands and they've been displaced forever. Yeah. Um, so yeah, a bit of a somber history, but it is indeed a, a fact. And um, when we hear the words Bikini Bottom, actually even Bikini the Swimsuit was right. named for those islands. So yeah, I just so think of that when I, when I hear that um, wow. because they're also Micronesians. Mm -hmm. um, so very closely related to us. So. Thank you for uh, sharing just that. To share Are those that. islands uh, currently inhabited or no? No, they're still irradiated. Yeah, that's what wow. I um, And they have not been able to return there Obviously. for, and probably won't for yeah. centuries. Hmm. Yeah. And think about all the non-human flora and fauna that was also affected by these testings and not just in those places but the surrounding habitats and the environment yeah. Yeah, entering interesting choice of using that yeah the uh, probably title. there yes exactly yeah, thinking, that it's uh, not yeah that's interesting i don't know not why. a happy history to use for yeah, a cartoon yeah, or exactly. a lot of things yeah uh, thanks for sharing yeah, that so much you. yeah i was completely unaware of yeah. this yeah, i will yeah, definitely I do some more so. reading on that absolutely I'm gonna thank you have a new respect for spongebob Again, I do love the cartoon. Yeah. And I think it's possible to have an affection for it and also recognize there's a yes. history behind Absolutely. it as well. So it brings me back to a question that was yeah, it named on purpose knowing this history or just a coincidence that? That I really cannot okay. say for sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Pull it on you there. Well, that, this is a beautiful, beautiful piece of boulder. It has a bunch of my bazingas. <laughs> and we just passed some wonderful, uh, wonderful uh, brisingids. Uh, That's a, gorgeous. Yeah, uh, large fans of probably uh, primnoids that look like primnoids, uh, Parastella uh, genus. Uh, we have a Hemichorallium, a bunch of yellow crinoids, uh, mushroom coral as well on the top. And cup corals, squat lo a couple of squat lobsters. There's a lot of life on this. Yes. Folder. And a lot of color, too. Absolutely. Atalanta in the background. I, yes. like, that. I like that. <laughs> That's Atalanta's so in their own place. 
The typical furoids on the fans. Beautiful. Wow. Oh, there are a lot of Marshallese in Honolulu because